it will, uh, it's interpretation, it interpretates itself. And so if you read the whole thing, not just a verse or two, and I know you know that too. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but the holy men of God spake as they were moved by the word of God. And so we've always, uh, our dear people that minister here, we always make sure, well, they, I don't have to, but they preach the word of God. They preach right out of the Bible. And I know you like scriptures, right? Amen. Amen. I, I do too. It tells us in the, uh, in the first Corinthians chapter 12, talks about the gifts uh, of, uh, should be operating in, in the church. The gifts uh, of the word of God. Gifts, nine gifts. Uh, each one of these is a gift, but you know, there's no certain uh, one that's, you know, some person could have all nine of them. I don't see why not. It didn't say that it was for one uh, person, but uh, if somebody got the gift of healing, it's a word of wisdom, word of knowledge. Faith's in there. Faith. It's impossible to please God with, with, without what? Faith. Faith. It's impossible to please God. Uh, you have to have faith as a substance things uh, hope for the evidence of things not seen. Is that right? Yes. Faith. Something's not seen. Speak it. If you want something, I, I mean, you say, I need this, Lord. And this, the Bible says that the Lord will supply all your needs. Not your wants. My Lord, I got a want less than I have. But he says, supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. So God is able to supply your needs. Go so ask him. The Bible says, uh, call on me. I know what you have need of. Before you even ask me, he said, I'm doing what you call on me. And uh, always be uh, real positive when you talk to the Lord. Because he's a big God. Uh, he said, I own cattle on a thousand hills. And I used to sell a lot of gates when, uh, in Kentucky. And then after I moved up here, I lost my job. And the Harvins got laid off. So I went, got me a truck, went back down, picked up a little gates, and I found a scripture in Psalms chapter 50, I'm sure it says, that I own a cattle on a thousand hills. And I said, Lord, that's a lot of gates. And I, <laughs> it, was, uh, it was almost uh, scary how many gate, uh, gates I sold around here. And Pay, my, pay their bills until Arvin's called me back. Uh, there was one guy over, his last name was Lee, uh, over in Mooresville. Uh, I took him a load, a whole load after load of gates and dropped them off to him. He resold them. And, but uh, I said, that's a lot of gates. Cattle on a thousand hills. I said, Lord, take me to the people who's got the cattle on a thousand hills. I, I don't know. And, and you can do that. And he did. He, he, not take, he took care of us, didn't he? he? took care of us. I didn't have a job. I went to the finance company and I said, I need $1,200. I need to buy a truck. And, and, I, and then he said, well, what's your, what's your uh, work status? I said, laid off. <laughs> he said, well, I'll call you. That means you're not going to get it, right? Yeah. And so he called me and said, well, we're sorry, Mr. Roy. They always call you that, uh, Mr. Roy. Or but we just cannot let you have a home. And I said, I went up there and I said, now look here, I, I need this. And I said, I'll tell you what, I'll pay you back every dime of it. I'll not be late on it. You can guarantee that. I said, but I need it. I, I need this money. And he said, well, okay. And he wrote me out the check. I went and bought the truck. And went down and within, I, I made $1,200 probably the first three or four weeks after I got to sell the gates. I, I could pay you back. I could pay you back. Of course, we wouldn't have eaten nothing, but I could pay the loan back. And so the Lord, take, he takes care of it. Does, does he not take care of it? Yes, I mean, you amen, trust amen, God. amen, yes. You can trust God. Yes, amen. I mean, put it out there. Tell him what you need. Don't be afraid at all. No, no, you're not. And there's a miracles of prophecy and discernment of the Spirit. Uh, there's uh, tongues and interpretation. That's, that's 12. Uh, the uh, gifts of the Spirit should be operating in, in a service. I mean, a service, you know, with a uh, few people in it. The Lord, the crowd don't bother him. He's not nervous. Amen. And, Amen. Uh, and so he, he'll do anything with a two or three or four or five. I mean, he's uh, he's ready. The Bible is the Word of God. I believe it. So that, that's, that's a trumpet that 
we should sound and take heed of. That's a that's a heed. Take heed of this trumpet. Atheism. I seen a sign the other day said, uh, "What does it say? I don't believe in God, or uh, there's no God." Mm -hmm. And what was the Fox News we said? Saying? Anyway, I thought, well, if there's no God, what do you get putting your sign out for? What do you care? Put your sign down. I don't care what you say. And we had a big sign. There's no God. Okay, what are you fighting against it for? You'll be okay. And I'll tell you about the Word of God to defend itself. Yeah. All right. Amen. The word of God. That's the right. Man, you don't have to tell me that. I mean, you're not going to convince me because something happened to me in 71. I, I can't take it back. And uh, I can't get over it. I don't Amen. want to get over it, I can't get over that. I can't get over that night. I can't get over that day. I, I weep for the years to come. Um, so atheists, uh, they deny the existence of God. Deism, they, they deny the existence of God, but uh, they, they don't deny it. They just don't, they don't believe that he was real, revealed to man. Well, he came to man. He came to his own, he said. Came right to the Jew people. Right through the family of uh, David and came for them to get them just for them. Uh, he said, My uh, my gospel is for the Jews first and then to the Greek, or then to believe and then to the Greek. When he said, I'm not saying the gospel of Jesus Christ for the power of God and the salvation, to the Jews first yeah. and then to those that believe and then the Greek. All of them. That, was, that would be us. Yeah. And so he came for us. I'm glad he did, aren't you? I'm glad. Yes, amen. I'm saved tonight. Born in this family. Right, amen. I'm twice born. Amen. amen. And I'm not as old on the second born as I am the first born. I'm going to take the second born. I got born. I'm 48 years old tonight. 48 years old. Tomorrow um, morning, ask me how I feel when I get up. So I'm going to take that. Well, I'm going to take the spiritual birth. Somebody would be very old. Well, yeah, I'd be so um, how, how long have you been saved, Mary? 20 years? 10? 5? Today? Not yet? No. I appreciate you, Mary. You're walking with God. You're really, Amen. You're really in it. You're strong in the Lord. Now. We always have him. Now. We need you here. We need you to see you. Right, amen. You and Jeff. And all them drink is yeah, fill it. Sunday school. Make it look good. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, agnostic, they, uh, they don't know whether they got or not to say. Well, I'm glad I'm not that way. I'm really glad I'm not that way. Amen. Amen. Materialism, holistic, all, all matter is eternal. Uh, matter always exists. You know, uh, that's, that's good. I'm glad there's somebody who believes that. Pantheism. Or, or how you spell it. The universe is God. God is the universe. Everything is one substance. Oh, yeah. Who is these people? They ain't nobody I know. Uh, rationalism, nothing exists beyond reason. <laughs> By reason, well, I hope that ain't the case right there. That they believe, some people believe that. And everything is by chance. How do you like that? Mm -hmm. Everything is by chance. You, uh, This world, uh, you know, big. I heard a guy talking about the Big Bang Three uh, last night or something on some kind of documentary, and um, I don't care what they say. I just know that uh, he's alive. Amen. Yes, Amen. And he's my God. Right, Amen. And he he had the victory over death, and he uh, he's going to take me with him. Right, He's Amen. coming back. Uh, amen. Bible says yes. I believe that, are you? Yes. Amen. I know you do. Oh, yeah. Believe in many gods. Well, there's a Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. All three of these are one. Mm -hmm. One. One baptism, one faith, one Lord, above you all, in you all, through you all. Hallelujah. Above you all. In you all. All around you. Um, so I believe the Bible. The, uh, you know, I know we, we sound the trumpet a lot about, you know, living, uh, be a good witness and, and uh, you know, the watchman on the wall, Ezekiel 33, 
I might get that. Is the screen broke down, Brother Deacon? I can get it for you. Let me let me win one. Let me let me win. I know where Ezekiel is. You give me a chance. What did I say? 33 what? 36. Woo! Am I there? Ha <laughs> ha. I'll win. Okay, sweetie. If, if when he sent the sword coming up on the land, he bloweth the trumpet, okay? That means war is coming. When he sees the sword coming up on the land, the army is coming, the enemy is coming. You know the enemy is coming after our kids? Oh, yeah. You know he's putting the target on all of our young people's back. Yeah, right. He is really after them. The enemy is coming, and he's right. He is trying to deceive all the young people. Yeah. If he gets this generation down, Lord, what will the next generation be? Uh, if the nation loses its righteousness, if it loses its way, sin, uh, uh, what is it, sin destroys the land, but righteousness is exalted? Something like that in Proverbs. If we see the sword come upon the land, he blow up the trumpet. Now this is the watchman on the wall. Right? It's a, it's a, he's uh, up here, he watches all the time, and he's got a certain trumpet. And it's got to be a one that blows for war. They was the one they have to jubilee. And so uh, I don't, I don't listen to much, uh, watch much TV. But I, I don't think there's too many people that, that's um, blowing the wrong trumpet. That, you know, like blowing a jubilee trumpet and get ready for the day of celebration instead of war. I, I believe we just uh, blow. If the war enemy's coming, blow a trumpet. Yes. When I bring a sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of the coast and set him in, in the watchman, if when he sees the sword come upon the land, blow the trumpet and warn the people, you got it, boy, you got it. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and take him not warning, if the trumpet come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his head. He had to sound the trumpet, the war, and the, and the enemy is coming. Get ready, to, get ready to fire. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took no warning. His blood shall be upon him, but he that take warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow out the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Who is the watchman? Us. All of us. We're all ministers, right? Yeah. We are. So, I mean, we watch the, you know, the uh, watchmen for the church and stuff, uh, the, the ministers, but you are the ministers too. So, if we do not blow the trumpet, if we do not sound a certain sound that, you know, it's uh, the enemy is coming and he's coming right after our kids and we can see it, and sometimes we don't feel like that we have any kind of authority over it, but we do. We have to take authority by the power of God, in God, through Him, and set a precedent in the family. That we have the authority to do that with God if we are walking in the path of God and the righteous of the Lord. We have that authority. And God, listen now, God will back us up. He will back you up. And listen, all, you know, we know that all things work together for good. Not all things are good, but all things work together for good. They are the souls of God who are called according to His purpose. So we know that. We can take a stand on that. It might not be good, but all things work together for what? For the sake. Good. good. Now that's great. Out there. You can't get no better than that. That's as far as you go in there. That's, that's it. That's the that's end of that. That's, that scripture right there ends a lot of stuff. So, um, we're, they're putting fear in the ministers and churches' lives uh, around the people are. Uh, the people that very, uh, you know, they just, uh, they don't care. And and the people that's, uh, that's marching up and down the streets right now in different cities, they'll never be satisfied. They, they got it where two men get married. They don't, they don't stop there. Two women get married, they won't stop there. It won't be long, I shouldn't say this, it's probably going to get, it won't be long to tell, it'll be okay as a father to be marrying daughters and, yeah. and uh, you know, people remarrying their dogs and their cats. And, I, 
he said, that's bad about cats. You can't love her. They're all on in now. I got, I got seven right now. I love her too. I drunk the Kool-Aid. I drunk the cat Kool-Aid. <laughs> all right? But they put fear in us. And we should not be sounding such a, don't be mean, don't be political crap. Well, we just have to go with the Bible says. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yeah. All right. Uh, so it says, professing themselves to be wise. This is Romans chapter 1. I'm going to get out quick. This one. They became fools, possessing, professing themselves wise. And changed the glory of the uncomfortable God into the image made like the uncomfortable man. Okay. He's saying God's just a man. He's not, you know, he's not going to do anything. And the birds and the four foot of beasts are creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Listen, own hearts, all right? To dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Now that will be preached against. I mean, out of love. You have to love people. You have to love all people. You know, I'm not, uh, I'm not for what you're doing, but I, I love you. I have to. If I'm not, I'm not saved. For God is love, right? Amen. Until I am worshipped and served the creature more than the creator. This is that. Hmm. That's pretty proud. Who is blessed forever, amen. For this cause God gave him up into a vile affection, for even the, the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural abuse on the woman, burning in their, uh, their lust one to another, toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that uh, recompense of their error, which was me, which was um, due. And you know exactly what I was talking about, don't you? That's it. That's I mean, there's no in that kind of lifestyle. That's sin. Well, adultery sin, fornication. Uh, a lot of things are sin. Covetous, that's sin. It's all sin. But he's telling you right now that this is going on. It went on before, it, thousands of years ago, before we were coming to sin. But that ought to be, we cannot be uh, fearful to preach the word of God. Amen. And to take a stand on the word of God. For our own young people. Our own young people need to hear that. But that's a sin. And unrepentant sin will send you to hell. Now hell's hot. Heaven's got streets of gold. You got two, you got two chances. Right there. I'm going to take the upper. How about you? Right. High road yeah. now. Yeah. So the heated. Take heed trumpet. He said, listen, trumpet sounds. Uh, if it sounds an uncertain sound, who's going to be ready to prepare for the battle? So who's going to know if the if the churches of America start shutting down and going their own way? I heard just recently they are more churches closing up just daily almost. I don't know how big it was. It's probably small. Now we teach on giving, uh, tithing. And probably not enough. We teach the Bible. I mean, it's there. It's in there. It's called the first fruits. Now, if you go out and get a job and work and work 10, 12 hours a day, hard as you want to. Work six days a week. Get more to A Sunday, don't, don't take a job. Don't go there. Because it, it, you just lose. I mean, you actually lose more than you're going to gain. Eventually, you will. But six days, work. Sunday, Take a day off. <clears throat> now, working is reward. And people think they get a job. They don't, they don't give the Lord anything. And they still live. They have money. That's a reward of what you do know, the fruit of your labors. Now, <clears throat> when you give the first fruits of your labors to God, now you're in the path of God. Now, when you're in the path of God, the Bible says that the blessing, there's a difference between rewards and blessings. I'll tell you right now. You have to earn a reward. The blessings are automatically when you walk in the pathways of God. When you're faithful. The Bible says, Deuteronomy chapter 28, that 
blessing of God will overtake you. I mean, run you down, jump on your back, and just hold it. Yes, amen. That's a blessing. Now. That's not no reward. That's a blessing. There's a difference between reward and blessing. You can get a reward took away from you at any time. But when God places a blessing on you, you're blessed. But he said, the Old Testament said, give the first fruits of your labor. Uh, uh, I think Proverbs 3, 9. So, yeah, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the fruit, with the first fruits of all thy increase. That's what Pro uh, Proverbs said. Now you can uh, don't, but people that, that give to the Lord, they just it's just uh, they don't expect it, but it just comes. Uh, first fruits means that we, I mean, not, we we, get, we stop this in a car over there, that we we really don't we really don't do that. I mean, we give, but we uh, you know we do this and this and this and this, and then at the last if we got. You know, we got a bill we got to pay, or we got to eat. We got to eat, don't we? Then we do. And we run a little short with this gift of the Lord. That's not the first. He said, if you pay it first, then you'll have enough down here at the end. If you wait for the end, you might not have enough. The first fruits, that's very important. That's where the blessing, that's where the power comes from. It was Abraham and Ishmael and Sarah. And, and God said, that he's not the one. He's not the promise. And so don't look at him. He said, take thy son. Listen to this. Take thy son, thy only son, Mount Moriah, and sacrifice him on the altar. Because he was the first fruits of the promise, Abraham and Sarah. They, that life come out of death. Don't tell me God can't do something. You never get too old to work for God. He'll take, he'll get life out of death, something that was dead from the time she was a little baby, a little girl, her womb was uh, dead, and God brought it back to life at nine years old, and so he said, take thy son. Now what do you think Sarah would say? No, Abraham, that, we can't do that. You're, you're killing the promise. You're killing what God had promised you. He promised you that uh, you're that your descendants be like the stars. You can't count the stars. The sand on the sea, you a great nation. You're going to have a great name and a great people. And your children's going to walk after you. And she said, if you kill him, if you sacrifice him, all the promises are dead. But if you do not sacrifice the first fruits, the promise is dead. Anyway, it is. And I want the promise. Do you want the promise? Now, the sound of trouble. The sound. Uh, if you want to be wealthy, then start with God. Amen. Blessed man walking in the house of God, and they're, they're standing with him, or sitting in the seat of storm. But his delight in the word of God, the word of God is meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water, that, that his leaf shall not wither, and he shall bring forth his fruits in his season. And whatsoever he does, shall, shall prosper. Hallelujah. That's the word. That's fire. So that ought to be sound. I think we do. So he took a, uh, Isaac up on there and, and built an altar and was fixing to sacrifice him because he knew in his heart that God would raise him from the dead. And I think it says in Hebrews, I hope it does, after I said it, uh, that he could raise him up. And the angel of the Lord said, Stop Abraham! And there was a ram caught in the thicket by his horn that brought him up there and sacrificed him in the place of him. And Jesus died in the place of us, didn't he? Yes. Uh, we deserved it. We deserved to die and go to hell in a handbasket, but he died for us while we were yet sinners. Christ loved us and died for us. And so that was the first fruits. Now you got the first fruits give to God. Now here comes the promises. Here comes the great nation. Here comes the children of God. Here comes Abraham's descendants. And you can't even count them. Uh, there would be no need. Couldn't even try. And they, they're great people. They're blessed people. They're still blessed. The Jews are some of the richest people in New York and all over the world. They have been persecuted because of the rejection of Christ, but they are blessed because of the first fruits of Abraham. Amen. Now, God told Joshua, he said, Now, Joshua, you go to pass around Jericho. It's the first city now. That city is a curse. Nobody takes anything. 
Nobody takes nothing. All that goes to me. The, the first battle, the first city crossing into the promised land across Jordan, that first city of Jericho, march around it, the last time, seven times, the walls will fall, go in there and get the spoil, but it's all mine. Do not touch it. Don't touch the first. Don't touch it. Then what you have? Nobody gets anything. Achan did. Why, you know, he picked up a little gold, a little silver, a Babylonian garment, and hid it in his tent, and trouble. Why? Because God said, don't. Don't do that. The first fruits going into a, a promised land, the first battle, the first victory. Uh, this is going to be your victory all along. They, so they headed up to Ai. So they said, just a little, little nation up there. Go up here and take care of that. And got up there and 36 people died. Now that's not a lot of people back then when thousands died in wars on each side. But it was not that. It was They died they went up there knowing, not knowing what was going on back in the camp that somebody had took the first fruits and hid it in a tent. And that's just saying us because we're, uh, we're made out of dirt and we're the tent, tabernacle of God. And so they hid it in itself and they went up there and 36 men died and they, and they turned and ran. They got scared and God was like, like anybody to be fearful. And they hop all that out of there and Joshua went through this. The camp, and they can had uh, he confessed that he kept some of the first fruits uh, of that battle, and he hid it. Now what's he going to do with it? No one to spend it. There's no 7-Eleven uh, out there. There's no Taco Bell drive-through. No McDonald's. I, probably a McDonald's. I'll have to back that up. They probably had McDonald's there. But anyway, uh, what's he going to do with it? Could spend it, and so they got in trouble, and they. They stoned him, his wife, his kids. Listen, we affect our kids. When we do not do walk according to the things of God, we affect our families. Our decision we make as parents affects something in your family. Amen. They stoned the kids, the wife, Aiken, all his cattle, and he a big heap of stones. Because of that. They had to they had to die. Something had to die for taking that. So when we don't do uh, what God wants us to do, walk in the path of God, understanding that some of it we die a little bit spiritually. And and you can absolutely die spiritually when God can resurrect you of course. Uh, but you can you can die, you get weak and you get doubted and you get fearful. And it's because you haven't walked in the paths of God and took things real serious. So we need to sound that trumpet, don't you think we do? Yeah. To our Amen. kids. Yes. And we, Brenda and I, we're driving down the road talking, and we just had a little Bible study, um, and I got convicted. And she said, Will one sinner come and bow his head and pray? And I was so oh God. <laughs> <laughs> one congregation. Man. The unknown trumpet. It's hurting America. The church is hurting. A people that's, uh, that wants faithful children of God, but just faithful, faithful, uh, just determined that they're going to walk with God. Uh, and now it's just, well, it seems like everything's okay. Stamp good, stamp good, rubber stamp. Uh, but the, un, the unheard trumpet. Those people not even hearing it. Uh, there's still churches preaching the gospel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There's still people loving the gospel. Amen. Amen. Still, we're not the only ones. Uh, unheeded trumpet. Uncertain trumpet. A clear sound. Make it plain. Amos 3 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city that people not be afraid? Or not run together. There was no uncertain. There was no which trumpet. So they run together. Shall there be evil in the city? And the Lord had not done it. Not do anything about it. So we we just need to be clear. We just need to be plain. Amen. And everything we do. In the Sunday school. My Lord. How important it is to have spirit filled teachers. Teaching young kids. About the things of God. Uh, to be a good citizen, 
to be a good neighbor, to love God, to be respectful, to honor God, honor the house of God. These things are very important when you get older. It gets easier when, you get, when you've been taught. Listen to what the, uh, 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 Paul was in Acts chapter 17. And he walked by this little service that people's having. And he heard him. And he walked in. And the worship was, he, he thought was good. All of a sudden, he looked around and he seen a, a sign on the altar said, to an unknown God. They was worshiping an unknown God. I think that's Acts chapter 17. We might read a little bit now. Okay. I'm about done. We're going to have cookies. Oh boy. That's a trumpet in it. We'll sound that trumpet in a minute. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, You mean in Athens, I perceive that all things here are two superstitions. For as I passed by, I beheld your devotions. I heard the singing. I heard it. I thought, man, a little church going on. This is wonderful. I fell in all with the inscription to an unknown God. Lord help us in America. God help this place. This place is so blessed. Amen. I mean, it, we just we feed the world. Can't feed the world. Do at any time. I'm blessed because of the things of God. People, we went to school. They pray. They read the Bible. They go to church. We, I, I barely can remember. Henry can remember it well. A little bit more than I do. He, he, sometimes he talk about Canaan's Valley. We all walk. I remember one time, just a little fellow, and had lanterns. Uh, I seen the light. And we walked to church. And man, that thing went on for hours. It's still, that little church is still there. I don't know, 9, 9, 10. And hours. I, I can still remember uh, the singing and the worship. And people was grateful. Walked to church. They didn't care. They walked home. We, we didn't have a car. Walked back, and I remember walking. Uh, we used to catch a ride in Dumbo. Went to Dumbo Church of God. And our neighbor, Marion Terry, had an old, a big old Buick, and he come by and pick us up. Wasn't very far, about a mile or so. Go to church. And people love God. They love to worship together and uh, sing. Shout, men and women, shout around old cold stove. Uh, eyes closed, hands up, hair flying everywhere, and never get burnt. Right around that old cold stove. Old Smith, you walked on the back of the pews, and it was empty. I don't know how in the world. Um, nah, if somebody told me that, I don't care if you believe it or not. I wouldn't believe it either. I've seen him all night. Henry tried it. it turned over about four or five of them. Finally got saved. <laughs> walked on the back of the pew. And he said, if Brother Old could do it, I'd have did it. <laughs> he tried his thing. I mean anything. And turned him over. Over the turn him over. That angel was trying to catch him going across there. He's about hands his burning them off. Get off of there, he said. Get off of there. No, he didn't. He gets so happy. Man, that was that was times when people did we didn't have anything. Kill chickens to eat and uh, slaughtered hogs. God called them home, we eat them all. Dumplings, my Lord. What times? <laughs> uh, serve the Lord. It was good. Shall I turn every blood in the city? Said? Yeah. So he was, uh, they was worshiping an unknown God. We, we knew, we, we know God. There's people around here that know, they have walked, God sees them. They have walked through the waters, walked through the Low waters, high waters, trials, all kinds of stuff. Um, so God is God. He's a good God, ain't he? Amen. Amen. I said Sunday morning, right? I, I just I wanted to I wanted to talk about that. Let's have a um, when you come to the house of God, be thankful. Enter to his gates of thanksgiving, his course of praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is God. As he that's made us not, we are saved. We are his people and the sheep of his master. 
And into his gates of thanksgiving is full of praise. Hallelujah. And into his gates of thanksgiving and the courts with praise. Come into his courts with praise. For his verse is everlasting and his truth endureth to what? All generations. All generations. Say the word. All generations. Is he a good God? Yeah. Amen. Let's stand. Yes. He's been good to us.